Hola a todos, el mundo. Y soy Mathieu, un alumno de la clase de español. <laughs> Checkpoint. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Alejandro Pro, acá haciendo una nota especial para Checkpoint, acompañado de Matthew Tomkinson. Yes, absolutely. Eh, senior Game Designer en Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. That's it, you got it right. The first question that I have to ask, in the press brief, it read that you were the senior designer. And yes. I can only assume that means you're drawing all the elderly people. In the um, well, my specific part is uh, more about uh, making sure that the players understand well the game. So I'm in charge of the team that does uh, the UI, the menus, and also uh, all the tutorials that let you learn more about the game at the beginning of the game. And that means that you have the final say in what goes? On the world, we never know I have the final say. In the end, you know, we are so uh, player-driven that we do playtest, uh, we do the betas, that in the end, it's almost the players that have the final say all the time. <laughs> well, one of the guys, the, one of the editors in Checkpoint, uh, just spent the whole weekend playing the beta, mm -hmm. and he was going on and on about the freedom that you, that you put into the game, into the players' hands. Yeah. And how do you find the, the, how do you find the best way to balance all the freedom and the, the way that the player can approach it tactically and just go full on violence and have fun. Well, when we considered uh, bringing uh, Ghost Recon to the next level with this new game, we thought that if we are a military tactical shooter, it should be about freedom, because you should have choices in your approach of tactics. And uh, it's true that it's not uh, always easy to balance, because when uh, players approach a different situation, it's not like we've planned the best way to do it, it's really up to them to decide how they want to do it. Uh, so if they want to take time and really scout uh, all the different enemies that we be in the camp and identify where there will be like uh, um, uh, breaches in uh, the camp. It's something they can do, they can use their drone, they can use their binoculars, they can choose to go stealthy and go inside it without killing anyone, they can go stealthy and kill everyone, <laughs> they can uh, choose to snipe from very far away, they can choose to ask for help from the rebellion uh, in the game that can uh, help them like a scout or even like uh, create a distraction in the camp. They have lots of items, so many options that uh, it's not always easy to balance. And um, during the production, uh, very often we had to um, do uh, like some tweakings so that it wasn't too easy to go just guns ablaze and destroy everything, or it wasn't uh, just too easy just to sneak in and finish it. But it's something that uh, uh, we'll be happy also to, also to see the results. We've looked at the beta and we've seen that this seems to be uh, to have a balance of the different approaches and we hope that it will be the case when the game will be out. So there's no wrong way to play it then? Well, a wrong way uh, would be like uh, just Maybe if you play in co-op with friends and everyone has a different approach, someone will try to be stealth, another one makes everything explode, that could be... Uh, Counterproductive. I, I would rather say that there are plenty of ways uh, to uh, <laughs> play bad at Ghost Recon because the game is challenging, but there are plenty also plenty of ways to play it well. How would you play it then? Tactically? My, uh, so, yes, I would say most of the approaches are tactical. My favorite approach is what we call Panther. So it's a bit, little bit like Splinter Cell. Mm. If you see, like I go stealthy, uh, I don't spend that much time looking at all the enemies, but I try to take them all one by one, either uh, uh, without shooting or just by shooting with my handgun. That's what I find uh, the most satisfying. But I know people in the team that spend that all of their time just uh, sniping, others that just want to uh, go uh, and uh, shoot everything. It's really up to you. And you'd rather go with an aggressive and quiet way? Yes, it would be like an aggressive, quiet way. Maybe passive-aggressive way, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like Ubisoft is clearly leaning towards uh, online cooperation. And they're, they're making games like Steep and For Honor, yeah. where they're definitely made towards cooperation. 
Uh, how do you feel about games that, like Ghost Recon, like a series of games that suddenly lean towards open spaces? Well, uh, it really depends. There are, we do uh, quite a wide variety of games, I would say, in uh, Ubisoft. For Ghost Recon, uh, going uh, during, uh, towards the open world uh, felt like the right choice. Because since, uh, as we were saying, freedom is really at core, we, we want you to, let, uh, to be uh, free to go wherever you want and to go whenever you want to do the missions you want. So um, I think that it uh, provides us lots of variety. And what I really like is that it feels like you're traveling when you do that. It feels like you're discovering a new and wild world that you can uh, you can uh, enjoy um, the way you want and um, but all the games like for honor that are really different from that can be fun too it's really up to uh, your brand and uh, the game you want to make so i heard that um for start there you're fantastic you too and you're sexy too you know you like that. So, so, something's happening. Oh no, we are recorded. <laughs> so apparently players in social media, uh, purist players, don't like that Ghost Recon is now open world. What do you have to say about that? Well, uh, I haven't seen the, those comments, but I could understand uh, that they would want exactly the same game. I think it's a bit of a shame because it's interesting also to see new approaches and maybe the first reaction is that when you really like something, when you really like pasta, you don't want to try pizza, right. but once you try pizza it can be good also. <laughs> and I still feel that it's really true to the gastrocon. I really don't see how you could argue that open world would not fit with gastrocon because as I was saying it's really where you are the most free that you could imagine. And we don't want to create like puzzles where you know, we know what's the best way to handle the situation. It's up to you to do it. Uh, no, I think uh, I'm happy with the decision we've made. So change is usually scary. Yes, they can Particularly be. Particularly for fanatics. But uh, there are some uh, games that uh, always change and uh, that's part of uh, what they are. I don't know if we'll change uh, all the time uh, for Ghost Recons for the games to come uh, in the next years. But uh, I think uh, here we have something that feels really true. The team at Checkpoint is really proud, as Latin American people, that you are um, taking the time to research and investigate and, and produce games that have a setting in South America. Is there any chance that we might find the next game to be in Buenos Aires or Argentina or Brazil, maybe? Um, one of the persons I was talking with today said it would be great if we could expand around uh, Bolivia and do all the countries one by one and then it's like you de-zoom from the camera with the ma from the map and uh, to have all of it. That, that could be great. And uh, actually, I, we, I really have no idea where we're going uh, for uh, after that. Uh, but uh, Bolivia felt like it was a great place uh, to represent uh, the most beautiful landscapes that you have in full uh, in all uh, Latin America. What can we expect to see in the in the coming years from Ghost Recon? Well, in the coming years, uh, the game is not out yet. Um, in the coming month, for sure, you'll see uh, there's more to come. And there will be announcements very soon uh, for, um, that will make you understand that you can play the game for a very long time. Uh, for the rest, uh, I don't know, I think that uh, any uh, location that has a uh, geopolitical uh, uh, interest uh, is uh, something worthy for the Ghost Recon Elite. And uh, in terms of gameplay, I think we'll explore ways uh, to give even more freedom to the players. Okay, so but we can definitely expect more content in, in 2017. Uh, for Ghost yes, for sure. So, Matthew, I went online. And apparently people on the internet have opinions. Really? I, I was as shocked as you were. Uh, yeah, I'm really surprised. Uh, and apparently some people don't like that Bolivia is portrayed as a cartel nation. Well, uh, I don't know uh, what to say. Um, here the idea is not uh, like to stigmatize uh, Bolivia or anything. The reason why we chose Bolivia is really for the landscapes and the variety of gameplay situation. It's a game uh, before everything, uh, so it's not like we are going to dip too much into politics or anything. So, uh, I and it's fiction. 
And uh, obviously, it's uh, it's a fiction. Uh, it's uh, if it was really like uh, that, it would be may maybe more complex. But here, it's really about the game and having a great landscape uh, for the game. Have you watched the Ghost Recon movie? Uh, w uh, which the the new one? Yeah. Yes, I haven't watched the one it on, yet. On Amazon. No. Yes, I haven't watched it yet uh, because I was uh, really busy finishing the game. But I'm looking forward to watching it. But you didn't have anything to do with the movie. Oh no, nothing at all. Nothing at all. No. They didn't come to you as a consultant or anything? For me, no. Yeah. Maybe other person in the team, uh, myself, no. Okay. You don't have anything to do with Ubisoft films in general? Well, uh, Ubisoft has uh, things to do with it, but myself, no. I not don't, personally? I don't work, not personally, I don't work with them. Okay. Are you proud of the game? Am I proud of the game? Oh, yes. It's um, What I really like is that uh, It happens with every game, but here people were really passionate about uh, the game and you could see that uh, they could argue uh, very harshly at some points. But in the end it was very positive because it really puts us to bring the best out of the game. And uh, this is really uh, the biggest game we've done in Ubisoft uh, and the fact that you, we let lots of freedom for the players is something I'm uh, especially proud of. And you can enjoy it with friends, so that's good. And that's uh, the best part, yeah. yeah. I think it's uh, something that is really important now because Players want to hang out with their friends while playing Definitely. their games. I think uh, this one will be a good solution to do so. Yeah, I mean, you don't usually find split screen in video games, so it's mostly online. Uh, yeah. And Absolutely. it's really cool to, to have. I mean, we had a, a long weekend due to, to uh, holidays yeah. last weekend, and I know most people uh, just shut, and, shut in, in, in the houses and, skip, and spend the whole weekend playing. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, you don't have the same uh, emotions when you play with friends or when you play on your own. And here it's uh, like you have the surprise of everything that uh, someone can do. He can do uh, smart stuff, and you'll be proud of him, and you'll uh, say uh, you you can give him a virtual high five while playing with him. <laughs> and sometimes he will bring uh, like uh, like stupid situations, but still that's fun. So can you betray people while playing? Well, I, well, in some sense, yes, you can. There's no friendly fire, so uh, it's not like you can kill someone. Right. But uh, you could destroy the vehicles they are in. Uh, you could, uh, like, uh, it's something you could do. I don't especially recommend it, <laughs> uh, but uh, if you do it with your friends, why not? I mean, it's freedom, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you can, uh, I mean, you can mention what games you're you're working on after this one, right? Oh, I really don't know. It's, I've been, I'll be uh, working on Ghost Recon Wildlands for a long time, actually. Because uh, not only we are bringing more content, but uh, we are bringing also updates. You know, we are looking at uh, the player's reaction and uh, improving everything possible. So it's something like, now we really have a live strategy with all our games, and it's not like uh, we ship a game and it's done. It's a game that is going to be living for a very long time. How long was the development cycle? Uh, it started more than four years ago. So it's very long, but when you restart a, a game uh, from scratch, it's what you need. Because here, going open world brings lots of new gameplay systems, lot of uh, new controls. Even building the world itself uh, takes a long time. So um, it's normal to take uh, this kind of time. But here, I can tell you, like to provide all this content, it took us lo lots of time. How many people were involved? Um, it, uh, it depends um, on the different phases, but I would say that uh, at some points uh, we reach uh, around uh, 500 people. Yeah. And you have to manage all the 500 people? Yeah, myself, no. We are okay. several to manage, but like you have a top producer managing the creative team right. that manages uh, other designers and uh, etc. So it's an organization that is not always easy because uh, um, since all, everything is intertwined, when you uh, change something in one mechanic, it can have an impact on, the, uh, on something else. So it requires lots of communication uh, mm -hmm. with everyone. Yeah, and another system is related. Yeah, exactly. And at the end of the game, you cannot make a change without warning all the <laughs> other people. Because if you change uh, like something in the AI, for example, uh, even uh, according to the controls, it can make a huge difference. If you change something in the cover system and the enemies can, uh, can perceive you, it has a huge impact. So uh, right. it was a bit more easier with the linear games, I would say, because uh, you change something at uh, one point of the game, it's not always the case. But here it requires lots of core. Coordination. Well, like little butterfly effects all yeah, across the game. Yeah, absolutely, games. that could happen. I have one more question. Yeah. Did you also have a beard 
when before you started working on the game? Uh, yes, actually. How do really? you know that? I was just fishing. Uh, <laughs> yes, if you have a, if you look on the internet, you can find pictures of me with uh, so, some uh, beard that could look a bit like uh, <laughs> that. Uh, absolutely. But now, and you ended up dreaming for yeah, the camera, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I knew that I was going to meet you today, and I wanted it to good, uh, look good, so, so thoughtful. I removed it. <laughs> no, actually, I, I I should have one more question, but I I can't think of it. I mean, one one last really strong question. What would you ask yourself? Ah, uh, what am I going to do tonight? That's uh, the question I'm wondering right now. What are you gonna do tonight? Uh, I hope that I'll get uh, to uh, try uh, to uh, visit uh, beautiful places in Buenos Aires and uh, like uh, meet uh, interesting people. That's always a, a great plan. Uh, how many people in the team actually traveled to Bolivia? I don't know exactly how many were they. I guess uh, it's around um, 20 people. So quite a lot. Like the uh, everyone, uh, it, yes, it, there was lots of artists, but there was also sound designers, uh, people from level design, uh, game designers, uh, producers. Hmm. So um, lots of different uh, specialties went there. Right, because it's in the details. Like you mentioned, exactly. sound designers. We uh, like just uh, going there. You want to take pictures. You want to shoot movies. You want to record sounds. You want to meet the people and really discuss with them to understand what it feels to live in Bolivia. And uh, if you want uh, the um, game to be really surprising, uh, either you go with uh, like uh, aliens or monsters, or you can just surprise by giving the real truth of the country and I think it's interesting also to let people learn more about the world uh, by playing games. Bueno muchachos, muchísimas gracias. Esto es Checkpoint. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias. La bicicleta es en la cocina. <laughs> <laughs> Besos a todos para Checkpoint. Thank you, you're fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a, a little bit tired. But no, that's great. Right, I mean. Do you want a coffee? No, 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 no. Uh, I've had enough coffee for the day. I think you need to rest a lot. No, but I don't want to rest. I want to go and explore the world. Yeah, <laughs> it's an open world. Exactly.